The next tool is called the pen tool and you can access it by pressing G on your keyboard. So let's press G and now we have the pen tool. The pen tool has a very similar function than the, the shape creation tools. If no layer is selected and you click here, you can create points. If you close this, so if you move to the first point again, you see that we have this little circle appearing here. And if you click now, then you created a shape and you also created a new shape layer. So let's delete this again. If I select my circle layer now, my solid, and do the same, I just simply click, move my mouse, click again, and close this. Now I've created a mask. So depending whether there is something selected or whether you are on a layer on a composition or on a shape layer, you can create either masks or shape layers. So let's go to our circle layer and let's delete the mask that I created here. And I will show you another function of the pen tool. So let's make sure no layer is selected. Let's move up here a little bit by accessing our hand tool by holding down space. And if you click, you create a point just a simple point and a straight line between these two points. I should say that I'm again in the pen tool, of course. If I now click and drag, you see that I can create this kind of a Bezier curve and now I can change the angle of this curve and this is how I can create paths. So this is a very similar workflow than in any vector-based uh, graphic program like Illustrator, or you also have a pen tool in Adobe Photoshop, for example. So let's create another point here. Let's say we want to create a nice arc here, and then we want to close this shape here. You see that in the corner of the pen tool symbol, we also have this small rectangle. So let's click here and let's take a look what we have here. We have the add vertex tool, the delete vertex tool, the convert vertex tool, and the mask feather tool. So let's go through this quickly. Let's choose the add vertex tool. The add vertex tool, you see that now we have this small plus symbol on our pen icon, can add, as the name says, vertices to our shape. So we can add a few points here in between. And now if we go to our selection tool again, so press V on the keyboard, we could now select these points, make sure that these are selected. You see that they are filled when they are selected and they are only these this square outlines if they're not selected and then you can move them around and you can also with the selection tool selected you can also manipulate these handles now let's go to the next tool here and this is the delete vertex tool with the delete vertex tool of course i can delete vertices so hover over one of these points and you can delete them now. The next tool here is the Convert Vertex tool. With the Convert Vertex tool, we can convert vertices from linear ones, so from hard edges, to Bezier curves. So for example, I do not want this to be a curve here. I want this to be a hard edge. I can come in here and simply click with my left mouse button on this edge, and you see now I have this hard angle here. If I click, hold and drag, then I can again add this Bezier curve and I can create a curve again. If you have the Convert Vertex tool selected, you can grab one of these handles and then you can change these curves individually. Let's Ctrl Z this. Now with the Mask Feather tool, let's take a look at this. Let's select the Mask Feather tool. And of course, we are working with the shape layer now, so I cannot really uh, do anything here because it's not a mask, it's a shape layer. And this is one of the big differences between shapes and mask. There are some different features. So let's delete the shape layer that we created right here. And let's go back to our tool and quickly create a mask, just a simple mask. Again, on our circle layer, just draw something here some kind of a shape, really doesn't matter how this looks like. Now let's go to our mask feather tool. Masks can be feathered. So if we select our layer and click MM, then we can reveal mask properties. You see that I created this dark green mask here and you see that there is the option to feather the mask. 
and if I do this you see what this does it will just blur out or feather the edges here so I do not have a hard edge anymore it's not a shape so it's something like uh, yeah it gets really soft so let's set this to zero again now let's select our mask two again here and with our mask feather tool what I can do now is you see if I hover it over my mask then this changes to a plus and now I can apply a point here and I can now click and drag this point so I want to apply a feather here and with the mouse clicked I can move this point around a little bit you know and apply a feather but maybe I do not want this to be feathered right over here so I can come here click and then push this inwards now you see that I have a really hard edge. I will deselect the mask for a moment that you can see what this does. Now I have a really hard edge right here and a really feathered out right here. And this I can do here. I can come in here, another point, feather this out even more. Or come in here, feather this out even more. And now I can come in here, add one and make this hard edge again. And you see what you can do. You can create some really cool looking shapes using masks and this mask feather tool. So to get rid of all of these points I can simply select them and click delete and then my mask feather path is gone. I want to also delete this mask because I do not need this anymore. Let's move on to the next tool and the next tool is called the type tool. You can take a look we also have two options here we have a horizontal type tool and we have a vertical type tool with my horizontal type tool selected i can come to my composition now make sure that no layer is selected and i can click in here and after effects will create a new and empty text layer and you will see a cursor is visible here and now you can enter your text like in every normal uh, word program and with my text tool selected, I can now also select parts of this text and maybe change the color. Or you can also come in here now and change the size of the text, the font, and all of these different settings. Maybe disable the all caps lock. I think this is probably not enabled in your After Effects. It's just the option that you have. So you can disable it. Now I have capital and small letters and then I can select yeah, certain parts of my text. So this is the horizontal text tool. Let's delete this text layer here and let's take a look at another option to create text. I now just clicked once. If you click once you will get just the cursor and then you can start typing. Undo this. If I click hold and drag then I can create a text box and now you see this looks a little bit different now. If I enter some words here now, then you see what After Effects does. It will take our text box here and will fill it with text. And now you could also change this by hovering over these edges or the points here and by scaling it. So this is the second option that you have with the horizontal type tool. Let's delete this and let's take a quick look at the vertical type tool. It is basically exactly the same. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention that the shortcut for the text tools is Ctrl and T. Now you see my cursor changed and I have the vertical type tool. So when I click once, then After Effects will create my new layer. Enter title. We'll see what this does. I will change back to my selection tool by pressing V on my keyboard so that I bring this down that you can see it. Now I will press Ctrl T to select my text tool and now you see I can select the text here. So let's delete this layer and of course I can do the same with the vertical tool. I can click and drag and create a text box and now I can enter my title into this box. And exactly as before, you see that After Effects will now fill this box with my title and I can change the layout by dragging and scaling my text box. So to exit the edit mode of the text edit mode, you can simply click somewhere or select the layer. And if you want to select the whole text on the layer, you can simply double click on the layer. And you see 
now the whole text is selected and now you can come in here and could do some changes like color size or whatever we will take a look at text and after effects in a later video so let's delete this text layer and let's move on to the next tool the next tool is called the brush tool and if you select it then you see that nothing happens the cursor did not change i'm still in my selection tool it seems and i cannot do anything and this is because the brush tool is one of these tools that do not work in the standard composition panel these only work either on a footage layer or on a solid layer so to show you this i want to double click my background layer double click on this layer here and you see now after effects opened up a new panel and this is called the layer panel i mentioned this panel before when we took a look at the after effects work area now in the layer panel you see that my cursor changed and it is now this little circle and this little circle is now representing the brush that i selected you also see that after effects changed the panels right here so i have now my paint panels and my brush panels right here you could even go to our workspaces and change the workspace to paint i showed you this before too and now we are in the workspace for painting so with my brush tool selected i now can come in here and with my mouse i can left click and then i can paint something in actually right now i do not have my graphic tablet here so this is a little bit hard but you know yeah, it's a perfect eight and if i go back now to my composition window hold down space to move over you see that this is now also part of my background layer here we will take a closer look on the painting options of after effects just for a quick introduction you can change the color right here and you can so now you could paint in some stripes here fill this up whatever as i said painting or drawing with the mouse is not really easy then down here you have brushes you can select different brush sizes that will create different strokes and you have a bunch of settings but we are not that interested in this painting options now we just want to go over the tool so let's move on to the next tool and this is the clone stamp tool so how does the clone stamp work let's select the clone stamp tool by the way the shortcut is ctrl b for both of these tools so if we have the stamp tool active I can now choose a bigger brush here maybe let's make this even bigger so let's change the diameter here to something like 50. if i hold down alt now you see that my cursor changes and now i can take the source i can specify the source of my stamp so let's say i want to recreate this very very cool looking part of my drawing here so i will simply click here and then I let go of my Alt mouse button. And if I click the left mouse button and drag, then you see that now I can clone this. So you see what I can do here. I can create a clone or duplicate of my nice drawing on another part of my composition. So this is the basic uh, function of the clone stamp tool maybe you are already familiar with this because it's very popular also in photoshop and it's most of the time used in composition things to to paint out some when working with special effects with some wires or whatever or then you can paint out these things out of your footage the next tool that we have got here is the eraser tool the shortcut is also ctrl and b so let's select the eraser tool what can i do with the eraser tool first of all of course i can again increase the diameter so that's a little bit bigger and then i can erase my drawing so you see i can start to erase but you also see oops what's happening my layer is also disappearing if you do not have the transparency grid active this is this little button right here then this may look like this so depending whether you have the transparency grid active but you see that after effects actually now erased our layer so we do not want this let's press ctrl and c to make this to undo this and if you do not want to your, your layer to be erased but just your your drawing then you can come in here to erase and then you can select instead of layer source and paint you can select paint only and then you can come in here and you could erase your paint or your drawing okay so this is the eraser tool and this is a very 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 quick intro to drawing in after effects let's go back to our standard layout here 
let's click here to go back to our standard. And actually, I still have these paintings in here. And what we can do now on our background layer, if we open this up, if it's not already open, you see under the effects tab, you can see that the paint effect is applied now. And if we select this paint effect and simply press delete, then our paintings will be gone. Let's move out of our layer panel here by closing it up. And let's go back to our composition panel. The next tool that we have here is the so-called Rotobrush tool. I do not want to talk about the Rotobrush tool now because it is not relevant for our course. Uh, we will not do any rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is a technique where you can separate elements in your video footage, uh, foreground elements and background elements, by drawing around them. As I said, it's not relevant for our course, so I will not talk about the Rotobrush. Maybe in a future course we will take a look how rotoscoping works. But what I want to do is I want to take a quick look at the pin tool, the puppet pin tool, because this can be quite funny for motion graphics. When you select the puppet pin tool, you see that we have more options here again. So make sure that the puppet pin tool, the first one is selected. The shortcut is Ctrl and P. Now let's come here and let's make sure that our stick figure is selected. With our puppet pin tool selected, we can now add some pins. So let's add a pin right on top of his head. Let's add a pin right on, by, at his chin, let's say, or his neck. Let's add a pin right here in the middle and a pin on his elbow, a pin on his hand. And let's do the same here. You know, it's not important to get this accurate. I'm just eyeballing it, making it very fast. A very fast example of a small cartoony rig here. So now I've added a few pins and now you see if I hover over these pins my mouse cursor changes to this moving icon and if I now drag and move this around you see what I can do here. I can create a little rig and I could now create little poses for my stick figure here and I could start animating it. So this is what the puppet pin is useful for. You can animate or uh, figures, but you can also do just some banding of layers or yeah. So the other options of this tool are a little bit specific and are not really important for us now. I just wanted to mention that this is possible in After Effects. If you want to get rid of the pins, then again, let's take a look here. Let's select under effects, the puppet here and simply press delete. Make sure that really the puppet is selected again, deselect, select. And now it's gone and I just erased the puppet pin effect from my stick figure. Okay, so this is it with the overview over the tools available in After Effects. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for participating in this course. I know this part was a little bit longer, but I hope that you got a good overview over the tools and that you learned something. So now let's continue and dive into After Effects a little bit deeper.